One Nation under Trunk. This is Trunk Nation with Eddie Trunk. On volume, Sirius XM 106. Well, there was no way I was going to finish up the first week of my brand new daily show here on Sirius XM volume, Trunk Nation, without talking to some of my favorite people in the world. And this guy certainly is high up on that list. And he's uh, not only a credible musician, but a, a good friend and just a great guy as well. And, of course, one of the original members of Van Halen. And as we said earlier, he is Van Halen through and through, no matter what. We welcome to Trunk Nation right now the great Michael Anthony. How are you, Michael? Woo! Eddie, with an introduction like that, heck, I'll call in every day. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, man, we could use a co-host. Do you want it to be <laughs> bi-coastal or what? No. Hey, everybody says I'm Hagar's sidekick right now. You have to pay him off to get me. Uh, and, he, and, you know, he's going to be expensive. I can feel that already. So, <laughs> how you doing, man? It's great to hear you back on the radio here. Yeah, well, doing a, a, a daily show here, talking music and yapping with uh, musicians and also with callers and having a lot of fun. It's been a great first week doing this show every day. And, of course, needless to say, uh, should you come to New York or when I come out to the West Coast, I'd love to have you come in and sit in. We've uh, we've done that in the past. It's always been a blast. Definitely, man. Definitely love to do that. How are you doing, man? I know Sammy just did his had his big birthday bash and did you go out there for it? Oh, man, I'm still recovering. I got back <laughs> last Saturday, and I'm still freaking recovering from it. No, well, it, was, it, was, it was great. In fact, I think these four shows that we played this last uh, birthday bash time, we always play it's like right around, it's the, between October 7th and 13th, which is his birthday. Uh, these last couple of years, our band that we've been doing with uh, Vic Johnson and Jason Bonham, The Circle, we've been playing down there. And, uh, God, we just had a great time this year. The place was packed all four nights. Uh, Vinnie Paul and Jerry Cantrell both came down and, and jammed and partied with us. It was great. A lot of fun. I got to get to one of them, and I know Sammy's offered in the past, and I've got to get there one of these times. And I just realized something. This year he was 69, so next year I can't even imagine what they've got next cooking. Year, next year is the year, Eddie. You've got to come next year, Sammy. <laughs> we're planning a huge thing. I know that, that our manager, Tom, has been talking to the, the government and all the locals whatever, and we're going to try to do a, a big outdoor thing, man possibly on the beach or something so it's it's going to be it's going to be pretty huge you know what i'm thinking i can do this show one of the cool things about uh, this show launching is i can do it pretty much from anywhere as long as i get an internet connection so i'm thinking remote i'm thinking broadcast from well from... i don't know down in cabo it's kind of iffy you know it's <laughs> <laughs> well, so... nah, heck, they, get, they even have sam's club they, they got you know they got all the big supermarkets walmart down there now so yeah you know what that'd be great we ought to talk to uh to our people about it, man. That'd be a very cool because Sammy's basically invited, and he also told me that all the people that call up to wish him happy birthday this year, everybody from, you know, like obviously Vinnie Paul, people like that, to uh, Toby Keith, you know, they're all like, oh, yeah, man, we're coming down next year for your 70th. It's going to be great. And so he's already, Sammy's already getting a little bit nervous because he thinks that there's going to be a lot of people coming down to jam with us for that one. Yeah, they're going to have to put an addition. He's going to have to put an addition on the place. I mean, it's going to be mayhem. It's going to be crazy. That's that's why we're going outside with it. That's why we're going outdoors. They're, they're talking about, like, uh, doing uh, putting together a venue on the beach somewhere. Yeah, that sounds like that would make a lot of sense because Sammy told me that, you know, he's the guy that really put Cabo on the map, and he was telling me that it's become pretty commercialized ever since he first got there. Like, it, at the time he first got there, there was nothing around, and now, like you said, there's every sort of business, and it's it's gotten much more uh, retail and commercial friendly. Yeah, I mean, for that and for the locals, that's great. In a way, it kind of sucks because he kind of destroyed the peace and serenity of the place. I remember the first time I went down there, there was, like, Main Street had, like, uh, Dirt roads. I think there was one traffic light in the whole town, and now, like I said, you come rolling into town, and you got you know everything from uh, Wall Super Walmart to you name it down there. Yeah, yeah, I've got to check it out. You know, I was thinking, and and of course, you guys have the band, the Circle, which is 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 so kick ass with Jason Bonham and and Vic Johnson and playing some Montrose and some Zeppelin and some solo stuff and some Van Halen. It's it's so cool. There's that double live record out there for people to check out as well. Um, but I was when you you have such a friendship and and it's very obvious to me that Sammy has uh, you know he's he's very he loves you and he and you guys are friends but he also 
yeah, he's kind of protective of you a little bit. You know, he was he lashed out on YouTube when Eddie Van Halen said that stuff about. Oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it when I saw that. I was like, really, Sammy? I mean, I you know, obviously, I couldn't uh, even believe what I read. And the people at Billboard actually called our publicist. Our publicist called me and goes. Hey, Mike, uh, we want you to be aware that this is coming out, and do you have any kind of a rebuttal? And, of course, my jaw was dropped open for about three, four days before I could even say anything. Because of what Eddie said. Yeah. Right. The man was off the leash. You know, somebody, they weren't water, watching him. They weren't monitoring him. <laughs> I heard I heard that that he was getting a little bit, a lot, or a lot of flack from, from his brother and some other people for doing that, too. But, hey, you know. But what's interesting about it, Michael, is that you never responded to it, at least publicly, but Sammy did. You know? And I yeah. mean, he came hard. I mean, he put that thing. It was like, it was fuck you, Eddie Van Halen. I mean, it, he laid it out there. Did you know he was going to do that? No. And let me tell you, I did actually do make a, like a statement to our publicist and she put it out there uh, for us, you know, just saying, Hey, you know, I take the high road and I'm, you know, and I know what my contributions are in Van Halen and I'm very proud of what I've done in Van Halen. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to jump into the mud slinging because it always, you know, and Sammy's kind of, uh, guilty of that every now and then, you know, even now he kind of like holds back, but I think that was one of the, probably the last big, <laughs> big fuck yous that Sammy decided to, no, I, he, he told me, he goes, hey, I hope you don't mind. I, I w was doing this interview, and uh, I heard about that, and so I just tacked this onto the end of my interview and told him to put it out, and I just, like, I, I watched, and I'm like, oh, my God, Sammy. <laughs> I mean, if he, yeah, he was pretty much pretty uh, straightforward about his feelings there. How did you feel about him doing it, though? Were you were you glad that he did it, or would you have preferred that he just uh, let everything blow over? Well, you know, originally I would I, – I'm the kind of guy I'm like, hey, I'm just not even going to respond to this because the fans know, you know, everybody knows. And uh, in that respect, I was like, oh, my gosh, Sammy, now why did you, you know, why did you do something like this? Because I didn't want people to think, hey, it was kind of a staged deal or something. Right, right. Us being friends. But then the more I thought about it, I, I went, yeah, you know what? I'm always the quiet guy. So, you know, I'll, I'll let Sammy lash out to them on my behalf, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, it, it know. seems it seems like Michael that Sammy knows that about you, and that's probably why he does it. Because you know, when we, uh, of course, people that watch that metal show know that I had Sammy on a couple times, and then Sammy said to me the last time he was on, he said, "You know what we got to do? Get Michael on here, and I want to host with you, and we're going to ask Michael questions because he got fucked by those guys." Yeah, basically, <laughs> basically, you guys tried to rope me into something, <laughs> I think, and I wasn't going to fall for it, Eddie. Yeah, I knew it was. Gonna, <laughs> I knew what Hagar was going to do. I knew you'd be more gentle about it. Yeah, probably. well, yeah, of but, course. Uh, but, but I think uh, that's yeah, really. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I do have my strong. I do have some strong feelings and whatever about everything that's that's gone on. But uh, you know, it's like the fans. Uh, you, you know, there's some fans that want to. That you know, they they love all that crap because I go I go on the internet. You know, there's a a couple of Van Halen sites, Van Halen News Desk, and 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 Van Halen Links, and all that. And I go on there and I I check it out or whatever. And there are some people that just just stir the pot, you know. Yeah. And and to me, it's like, hey, you know, life goes on, and I'm not one of these guys because I read about so much stuff and hear about so much stuff, and have friends in the business and in bands that you know the the breakups and all this stuff and the mudslinging, and I'm like, God, as a fan, I don't even want to hear this crap. Or or, or a, a friend of you know somebody in one of these bands, it's like, man, I you know I I just don't want to be that guy publicly, you know. When was the last time you had any exchange of any kind with Eddie or Alex? You know what? This this is pretty interesting, Eddie. There's a uh, a mutual friend of uh, Alex's and mine. His name's uh, Craig DeFalco, and uh, he he this this is a guy who was a tech for me for a while, and he actually was Eddie's tech. Uh, I don't know if it was the 2007 tour, but he teched for him one of the tours, and he stays in touch with those with Alex basically. And uh, I'm living, I got a, a relatively new place out here at the beach in Southern California. And uh, this guy, Craig, he had never seen my house, so he came out. He was on tour with Lenny Kravitz or someone doing tech and, and had a break. And so we went out on my boat. I'm like, yeah, you know, we'll cruise you around the bay and, check. you know, you can check the place out. And so, you know, as it goes, I had a couple of cocktails. And next thing, you know, we were talking about the band and the good old days and all that stuff. Because uh, he did, he did uh, I think, at least two, three Van Halen tours with me back in the 80s. And uh, so 
we're talking next thing you know, I've got him holding his iPhone up and I'm shooting a video going, Hey, Alex, man, just talking about the good times and, and you know, everything that's going on. I got all these heroes of ours, people we grew up listening to, they're like starting to drop left and right now. It's like, Oh my God. Right. And so uh, later on, we're at my house, uh, my buddy and myself, Craig, and uh, his phone rings, and it was Alex. And he, he, he's all, hey, tell him, like I said, hi. Next thing I know, he's handing me the phone. He goes, here, Al wants to talk to you. Mm. And I'm like, what? And this is, this is this past May. And I hadn't spoken to Alex in like 10 years, I think, 10, 11 years. And, uh, you know, nothing heavy. I didn't want to get into anything about the band, but, you know, it was just great to talk to him. We, we talked for about... 20 minutes and had a great conversation just about life in general and getting older and, and what's going on around us in the music industry, you know, and, and it was, it was actually really great talking to him. Yeah. You know, I've seen a lot of bands in my decades in this business that have had divisions and issues and, and what, what have you. And then, you know, there's, whenever they inevitably connect, whether it's on the phone or get in the same room or see each other, there's this, no matter what's happened, it seems like there's this brotherhood that comes back because you guys, the four of you guys, you created. <laughs> no, no, no. Van Halen's the exception, Andy. You forgot when we uh, went out with Dave and did the presentation at the MTV Music Awards. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. It was all brotherly love and <laughs> Until Dave and Ed almost went to blows after that one. Oh, my God. I'm oh, like, Oh, that's kidding. right. That's I'm right. Like, yeah. Yeah, because Roth, he was pretty much thinking the whole night was going to be about him. <laughs> and Eddie just wanted to answer questions. You know, this is all the big press junket you do after, you know, you uh, we present the award. You go through all the press stuff. You know how all that goes. And uh, and Roth just wanted to show, you know, all the press to be about him. And Eddie's going, hey, hey, this is before he had his hip surgery. He's going, hey, hey, no, this is what's happening. We're doing a step at a time. I'm going to do, you know. And, uh, man, all of a sudden, the next thing I know, our, our – uh, Security guy was like, arms outstretched. Dave on one side, Ed cocked, ready to go on the other <laughs> side. I'm, and I'm going, and I'm going. Oh shit! Get me the first flight tomorrow. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> it was like, oh my god. It was, it was something that could have been great. And you know, and it, it, this was, this was Roth. You know, it was all Roth. You know, because we, you know, people thought it was, it was staged and whatever. And even Roth thought that we were duping him because right after that is when. Uh, we announced uh, Gary Sharon being in the band. Right, right. You know, and it wasn't that at all, you know, and, and MTV wanted, they basically wanted Ed, Eddie and Dave just to present. And Ed said, no, if I'm going to come, you know, I want the whole band to be there. I want Alex and Michael there too. Right. So that that was pretty interesting. But anyway, get back to your story about brotherly love. Yeah, well, know, so much for back. that. Well, you just <laughs> shot it in the foot. It, it applies to everybody Van Halen, but Van Halen. <laughs> Van Halen was probably the exception. But, you know, when you talk about that, it's great that some bands can do that. But, you know, you look now like the other week they announced all the new nominees uh, for possible induction in the Rock and Hall of Fame next year, right? Yeah. We talked about and it now, the other day, yeah. instead of it all being brotherly love, all I'm reading on the Internet is, okay, what's the drama that's going to go down now between Journey and, you know, and this and that. And uh, it kind of sucks because – uh, I think was it uh, was it Metallica? Or I, I mean, there were there, there were a couple bands that I saw that went out there. I think it was Metallica when they were inducted. That everybody came out, or maybe I'm thinking of a yeah, no, band. Metallica there did. There are other bands that everybody comes out and it is great. And when Van Halen was inducted, I thought for sure Roth would be sleeping on the front steps of the Waldorf there before the show. And, like, of, like, uh, and of course, it ended up the only two guys that were there for the induction were you and Sammy, who were both out of the band at the time. Exactly. Now, come on. Let, what about that? And I mean, and I had actually spoken with Roth's manager. He called me about a week before the the, the, the induction, and uh, he goes, hey, you know, is, is, are you cool with Dave and all that stuff? And I said, hey, you know what? This is one of those things where whatever is going on, we can just put it aside for one evening, and I'll do a shot of Jack with him, and we'll get up on stage and jam. It'll be a beautiful thing, and then everybody can, you know, retreat back to their corner of the ring, I guess, you know? And uh, it was interesting when I found out what happened because, uh, you know, Eddie wasn't going to be there because he was in rehab, supposedly, <laughs> hmm. you know? And then Alex, of course, couldn't be there because he had to support his brother, right. supposedly. right. And then the next thing I know, it's sound check for the induction. I'm talking to Slash, and Slash goes, I can't believe it, man. Roth, you wanted to do Jump, 
And I told him about 10 times, we can't do jump. We're, you know, it's, it's heavy keyboard. Let's do anything else, whatever you want to do. And I guess Roth just really got heated up because, I don't know, he couldn't steal the show with jump or whatever. And uh, Slash said he was scratching his head. He couldn't understand it. And, uh, yeah, so Sammy and I were the only two that showed up. And it was it – was, it sucked. It was so bittersweet because, you know, it's one of those things where – my whole family came in, my wife and my daughters, and, you know, and I'm like, God, this should be just a great night. And I remember sitting there next to Hagar at the table, and we're watching REM play, and I leaned over to Sam, and I said, God, you know what? If we all could have been here, we would have kicked ass like something that would oh, not, yeah. have been, not have been forgotten for many years. And it was really sad. It was really sad, you know? And, you know... You got everyone. I'm, I'm I'm up there giving my little acceptance speech, and I'm looking on one side of the room. There's Keith Richards, and I'm looking the other side. There's John McEnroe, and everybody in between that. And I'm going, man, this is the greatest thing ever. And I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't understand why those guys just would not want to be there. For you that. know, there's so many examples of bands that go in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame the right way, and bands that just butcher it. And yeah. uh, and and I mean, I was just talking to Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick the other day. They're a prime mm-hmm. example of a band that did it the right way last year because they were in a lawsuit with their drummer Bunny Carlos and all that. Right. But you know what? For the fans, they went up there, they played three, four songs with Bunny, they put a nice smile on it, they did the right thing, and that was it. Then a couple of years ago, uh, when Kiss finally went in, who I lobbied for hard, and mm-hmm. and two of the guys, Ace and Peter, I'm close with in kiss uh the 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 hall only put the original four guys in they wanted those guys to play gene and paul wouldn't play with them and it was just this shit show of of bickering leading up to it and then they didn't play at all and i thought the same thing i was just like man here i am in this this you know that that rock and roll hall of fame room can be kind of stuffy and uh, you know and and i have a big bombastic rock band whether it be van halen or kiss or whatever get up there and just shake the rafters man it would have been such an enema in that place and they dropped the ball to be able to do it yeah exactly because like you said it can be stuffy and i've seen it be stuffy you know the stuff what you what you watch on tv and whatever how what they edit it down to because you know people can get up there and talk for an hour oh it's, on four, it's a four-hour ordeal yeah yeah exactly and so it's like like you said with a band like kiss or van halen or, or whatever to just go in and, and by the way yeah I, I i loved uh cheap trick i think they were probably about the best you know, same thing with, with Deep Purple. I grew up listening to Deep Purple. They're one of my favorite bands ever. That's when I started doing my scream, Ian Gillen. I'm like, oh, I'm going to scream like just like that guy. And, uh, but Blackmore I mean, it was didn't show up. to watch them play, but, you know, and then they got their whole thing with, with Blackmore. Right. And, you know, of course, rest in peace, John Lord, one of the greatest rock keyboardists ever yeah, lived. Yeah, well, if those idiots uh, at the Hall of Fame didn't wait on putting Deep Purple in and pass yeah, over them for 25 years, Lord yeah, would have been exactly, there. It's, exactly, it's, it was yeah. ludicrous. Hey, I've got to do a quick break. Can you hold through the break? There's a few things I wanted to ask you about. Yeah, sounds good, Eddie. I'll hold on for you. All right, I appreciate that, Michael. We'll be right back to continue talking more live with Michael Anthony here on Trunk Nation, Sirius XM, volume, coming right back with more with the great Michael Anthony. Hang out. Trunk Nation return Sirius XM 106. Love's Trunk Nation with Eddie Trunk on volume Sirius XM 106. What a great way to wrap up the first week in the existence of this brand new Sirius XM channel volume and the daily Trunk Nation live every Monday through Friday, 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern, talking to the great Michael Anthony. Uh, Van Halen for uh, a bit here hey, on this Friday. Best way to end the week. Yeah, what a way, man. <laughs> it's the, you know, if you're only here, we could open up some uh, a couple shots and really break into the weekend, Michael. That would be the oh way to do God. it. Oh, my God. We'll do a couple shots of my hot sauce. That'll start your weekend off. Well, listen, we're going to get to your hot sauce <laughs> in a second because I truly have told people, a lot of people about it, and I truly, truly do love your hot sauce. But picking up where we left off real quick, a few other things I wanted to ask you about Van Halen. You know, what was interesting about that whole thing when Sammy lashed out in the video to Eddie and all that is then what happened shortly afterwards, which touched off a lot of people starting to think that there could be the potential for a reunion because, and it seemed like a very innocent thing, but a lot of people read a lot into it that on Twitter, 
I'm sure you heard about this. Sammy and Eddie had a friendly exchange. They wished each other happy birthdays or something. Did you catch any of that? Well, I do have kind of a little spin on, a personal spin on that one, Eddie. I don't know if I should tell you about it because I don't want to kill anybody's hopes or anything. You know, because actually before Sammy did that, he told me, we were on, the, on, the, on his jet flying somewhere to do a gig, and he goes, he goes, damn it, I'm going to wish Eddie happy birthday. I said, go ahead, man. I mean, what, you know, come on, you know, he, and so he did, and then I guess Eddie responded back. Yes, yeah. Uh, he said, I hope you're doing well. And he said, yeah, Sammy, I hope you're doing well also. Right. Well, see, the only thing that I was thinking that seemed kind of odd, in all the years that Sammy was in Van Halen and that I had been around him and Eddie, Eddie never calls him Sammy. always call him Sam. Mm, so you think somebody so else was doing the well, social media? You know, Ed, Eddie's wife is a publicist, right? I, I don't know. I mean, well, I that, know, I know this. Thing, I don't know, but you know what? But it was a nice, friendly gesture. And Sammy has also said, I'm, I'm sure you've seen. There's been a couple other interviews that he's done where he says, "I'm sorry, I apologize to yes. the Van Halen brothers and whatever." And you know, because all this, all this lashing out and whatever. And Sammy and I, I mean, I love Sam to death, but sometimes he puts his foot in his mouth, <laughs> and when it, especially when it comes to you know rebuttals to to stuff that people say or accuse him of or Van Halen stuff. The worst thing Sammy can ever do is read shit that people say about him and Van Halen. Right. You know, because it, it does get him fired up. But Sammy has taken a turn now, and he does realize, you know, he goes, hey, you know what? Even if I never play in a band with these guys again, friendship and, you know, as, as human beings or whatever is more important to me than that. And, you know, he just wants... He says, you know, he doesn't want to go to the grave with any enemies, so I don't know. Well, I know, and he reached out to me because he was kind of, he was hot about this whole thing about with the circle, not being able to play Van Halen songs on TV, and he did an interview right. with me really hammering it. And then he left me a, a message, um, which, again, is it, uh, private, and I'm not going to talk about it on the air because it was off the air, but mm -hmm. um, you know, he left me a message about some, some stuff with Van Halen that he wanted me to po possibly help him out with as far as uh, something with an interview down the line. So... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, I think you're right. I think that maybe, but, but I'll tell you, I don't, I, I, nobody knows what's going on with Van Halen. If Roth is even still in the band or, I mean, they're so cryptic. We don't know what's going on. So, um, I want to touch on that. I want to touch on your hot sauce. I want to touch on chicken foot and, and a little bit on the circle. If you can give me like 10, 15 more minutes, Michael, we just got to do this quick break and we'll come back and pick it, it up Eddie. there. You got it. Dude. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. We'll be right back with more of Michael Anthony trunk nation on volume. Trunk Nation with Eddie Trunk. This is Volume, Sirius XM 106. Make America rock again. This is Trunk Nation with Eddie Trunk. On Volume, Sirius XM 106. Eddie Trunk live from New York City, the Sirius XM headquarters, Trunk Nation, live Monday to Friday, 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern, 11A to 1P Pacific. A week from Monday, uh, Halloween 31st, I'll be doing this show live for a week from Los Angeles, where we are talking now with Michael Anthony of Van Halen. So, Michael, the, as far as the Van Halen stuff is concerned, I mean, where do, do you see any hope at all for any sort of reunion with yourself and the band? Do you have any interest in it? Do you have any desire? Do you feel there's unfinished business there, or are you over it? Uh, you know what? In in some ways, I'm kind of over it, only because, you know, I'm, you can only hold your breath for so long. But it's kind of interesting that you say, you know, any unfinished business. It's like, you know, Van Halen being one of the biggest bands there ever was, it's, it's, it's kind of sad to see how everything kind of dwindled down like it did, kind of with a whimper, you know, which, which this band, if we were going to go out, should have gone out like just killing it all over the world. And, uh, you know, I'm always that never-say-never guy, you know. If the circumstances were right, I have no problem. I mean, I, I, I love going out and playing the, the music. And, uh, you know, if, if, if we did it, though, it would have to be, you know, none of this – four separate uh, 
planes and four separate this and that, and you only see them on stage, you know, it's it, it's got to be kind of like, you know, not I don't know if it can ever be like a brotherhood like it was before. You know, we used to call it, when Sam was in the band, we used to call ourselves the four-headed monster. But if everybody could get along great, I think it'd just be great to do it for the fans, you know. And, and as far as Dave goes, I, I don't know if, if, you know, obviously it would have been great to be on stage with Dave again. Because uh, I always, I always liked his silliness on stage, anyway. Well, yeah. Well, that that became. <laughs> well, that in a way, it's kind of comical, you know. But it always made for an interesting show. Yeah. Well, that and that 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 lies. That's the other question in all of it is the fact that you now have these two factions of Van Halen world. I'm a fan of both. I look at the Hagar and Roth versions of Van Halen as both great bands but very different bands. To me, right. they're kind of two different bands. And But for a lot of people who are younger than myself especially, the Hagar Van Halen is, is their Van Halen. And mm-hmm. I've said this many times, the, the period of time you guys made records with Sammy – it's not like there was just, oh, maybe one hit and it was kind of a little bit of an anomaly. There's like a, a dozen huge songs that are outside of the circle playing them are literally on the shelf ever to be never to be heard live again uh, of, right. of a you'll whole hear, generation's you'll hear, you'll hear Van the, Halen. You'll hear, you'll hear the older Van Halen fans that are, you know, like my age that grew up with the band, uh, obviously not liking any of Sammy's stuff because, you know, people go, well, yeah, you know, they still kind of rock, but they became more commercialized and whatever. And, uh, which, you know, I don't think we did, you know, obviously they were, they were playing, you know, we had our, uh, uh, you know, number one albums with Sammy and whatever, but I think we were rocking just as hard as with Dave, you know, and you you know, you can't be 20 years old your whole life. Right. And if people (laughs) really look, if if people really look at it, like I used to, (laughs) (laughs) but if, if people really look at it, Michael, people that say that they forget, like, look what started to happen around the time of 1984 when Roth was still in the band, that album in particular, there's the big introduction of keyboards with jump and I'll wait. So there was already signs of the band taking a little bit more of a melodic turn, even with Roth. And I think when Sammy came in with his ability as a singer, it just brought a little bit more of that element in, but you still had songs like pound cake and judgment day and and get up and all this stuff that was you know good enough that rocked as hard as anything so people that say that they don't really have i don't think a full understanding of the of the catalog and maybe where van halen would have went anyway if roth had even stayed exactly exactly you know that's one of those what ifs you know you'll never know i mean it you know maybe the best thing that could have happened was dave leaving the band because maybe the band might have just went (laughs) <laughs> the other way from there, you know, and, and folded then, you know. But, uh, I mean, we'll never know. But, I mean, yeah, you know, it's just – it's a natural progression. You, we we can't you, we can't be Van Halen one our whole career, you know, mm. because, you know, it's you, you have to evolve as a – you know, you naturally evolve as a band, you know. And, and bands that try to stick to what worked for them, you know, they kind of get, get passed up, you know, because it's just the same old thing over and over, you know. Yeah, last thing on Van Halen. I've said this many times, and I truly believe it. To me, Van Halen's albums, especially the first four, to to me, top to bottom, untouchable records, are as sacred as how, and and will look, be looked back, if not already, they will be soon, in the same way people look back at Led Zeppelin records, in my opinion, that they are wow, timeless. Hey, that is, that is, thank you very much for that. Oh, I, I'm, dead, I'm that. dead serious. I've said that many times. I mean, they are of that stature. They are timeless. They are never not great to hear production-wise, song-wise, top to bottom, untouchable. And I often wonder, as as fans, you know, I'll go back and I'll play Women and Children start to finish, or I'll go mm-hmm. back. When was the last time you ever put on... Uh, an old Van Halen album and listen to it start to finish. Have you done that at any time? You know what? I do it all the time. And, you know, it's really weird. It's really weird. And this, this doesn't stem from me hoping the band will, you know, will get back together and, and tour and whatever. But, but when I'm home uh, practicing, in, fa- in fact, this morning I was just, I was playing a little while ago. And for some reason I felt I, I was playing uh, Everybody Wants Some and Somebody Get Me a Doctor. But I I I go I'll I'll, uh, I'll hit on one of the albums, and I'll go on it and I'll go wow and I and I I jam to it at home. You know oh, I mean? that's awesome. I I love I love them all, you know. And it's kind of funny because I'll I'll uh, you know I I can't think of anything right off the top of my head, but maybe I'll I'll pull one of the uh, pull one of the albums up on my uh, where I'm practicing, 
and go, wow, I don't even remember that song. And then it'll be kind of like, okay, I'm going to learn that song again. I was just going—I was going to make a bad joke there. I was going to say the reason why you don't remember is because, according to Eddie Van Halen, you didn't have anything to do with it. Well, maybe I should call Eddie up so he could come over here and teach it to me again. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Do you, do you but, have? Yeah, a... I, you know what? I listen to them all, and you know, and probably the hardest question, or, or the question that I, I I like to answer the least, if anybody still asks me, is which Van Halen do you like better? Right. Because I love I love it all, man. I love jamming to all of it. I mean, everything, any, you know, from as simple as running with the devil to, you know, uh, some of the Hagar stuff that, you know, I, I, I love it all, man. You, you know, know I, outside of the first record, which is just as iconic as it gets, I, I find myself going to Women and Children a lot from the Roth albums. A, a song like In a Simple Rhyme on that album, it's it just one of the great tracks of all time. And... and in, some as good far background, as, some good harmonies on that. Yeah, who did those? Song. Who did those harmonies? <laughs> well, you know me, I just screech. So, I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know and that that stuff. And it, it's in it. it, it the, the cool thing about the early stuff too is that you know we didn't have a band that just had one singer that screamed or whatever. And we always, and this is one thing you know that we always consciously thought of when we wrote uh, the early when the early Van Halen songs were being written, or whatever was where can we stick backgrounds in and harmonies and stuff like that because we just thought it sounded cool, you yeah, know? Yeah. To have a lot of that and not just have Dave screaming and whatever. So, but, you know, I, I love listening to all of it. I love playing all of it. You know, I'm the guy that, yeah, I'm the guy that'll have a couple drinks. And if I'm somewhere, if I go to Vegas, if I go somewhere and I'm sitting there, I'll get up and I'll jam a song or two with, with the band that's playing. You well, know? you know, I just saw an amazing Van Halen tribute band on the Monsters of Rock cruise that I host called uh, Atomic Punks, and okay. they said you got up with them not too long ago and played a song. Yeah, th they've gone through a couple of changes, and I almost am not sure exactly who's in the band now. You know, obviously Ralph. From Steel Panther. Uh, from Steel Panther. Yeah. When I first jammed with him, he was singing with the band and i got up with them quite a few times i'd uh, you know they'd be playing somewhere and it's kind of funny because i jammed with them once somewhere and uh a, a couple of f friends of mine were around the audience and they were laughing their heads off after the so show and i'm all well, what's up and they go oh these guys are were standing next to me and they're going damn that bass player looks just like michael anthony <laughs> they couldn't get over it <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are good, man. Uh, Ralph's they not in good. anymore. There are, there, are a couple of, there, there, are, there are a few of them out there, but the Atomic Punks are probably one of the Van Halen tribute bands that I've jammed with that, that really do the material justice. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing yeah. to see that. Let me hit you with a couple other things, and I'll let you go. Um, Chicken Foot, you recorded some stuff recently, right? Yeah, we actually have one song that we that we finished recording. In fact, we this past May, we did a little, eh, I guess you could call it a mini reunion. Uh Chad was on tour with the. He's been on tour with the Chili Peppers, and we, uh, the rest of us, had some time off. And so early May, we actually did two shows out here in Lake Tahoe, uh, uh, a little reunion thing. And we kind of, I guess, debuted one of the songs that we worked on. There's actually a couple of songs that that uh, uh, there's another one that we've yet to finish. That was something that did not make the. Uh, First Chicken Foot record that Joe all of a sudden got excited about again and sent he he, he redemoed it uh, his part and sent it to us and uh, look out you know cause if we can get Chad off the road with the Chili Peppers we're probably we're going back in the studio. So the idea and the hope is because I know Sammy was kind of resistant to it for a while but seems to have come around to to make a third record and go out and actually tour it and and kind of respark the band again. Yeah. But but tour it in a little bigger and better way than we did even the first tour or the second tour. You know the second it, it was it was it was so uh, uh, interesting how you know well not interesting but I mean it was kind of a, a downer when uh, our, our uh, one of our managers you know passed away during the recording of the second album and it kind of took the wind out of the sails a bit and then obviously Chad couldn't tour with us and. Uh, Kenny Arnoff, who's a great friend and a great drummer too, he came and filled in, and uh, you know it's just kind of like, hmm. And so uh, Sammy, I think, was ready to kind of go. Well, you know, you don't make a lot of money. You know, you put money in to make a record, and you're not making the money back, and all right. that stuff, and and whatever. But uh, I I think you know when uh, we went in, and and, it, and the, the odd thing about it was we weren't together when we uh, when we uh, actually did this song. You know, it was a demo that we. Were, passed around between the four of us 
and then actually kind of went in at separate times to do our our stuff while everybody, you know, when they had a break. But it turned out great, and everybody, I think, was saying, God, it'd be great to get together again and play. And then we did these two shows in May, and it was like, oh, my God. You know, we, we we remembered again how much fun we were having together. And, uh, of course, if we do it, it's going to be the original four. You know, that's that's the only that's the only hold up. We got to get everybody's schedules open to do it. Right, right. And this band, mainly Chad's, because the Chili Peppers are like on that never right never ending tour right now. So right. And the band that you've been doing with Sammy the Circle with Jason Bonham and Vic Johnson. I know there's the live record, and it's it's such a fun band because you're playing Montrose and Zeppelin and solo stuff and Van Halen. Is there talk of actually doing an album of of, of original material with that band, or is that band simply just a fun live band to jam on all this stuff? You know, it has been a fun live band, but, and, but we do have ideas that we kick around because before every show, we, we get together and we, uh, you know, warm up together uh, backstage. And uh, we've got a lot of little bits and pieces of ideas that, uh, you know, we record uh, if we're jamming something backstage. It's like, oh, man, that sounds cool. Who's got, you know, someone to lay their iPhone out or whatever and record a piece of it. And uh, I think we might see some original uh, Circle stuff. I don't know if, if, it, if it'll be a full album or what, but I think uh, we've got some pretty good ideas going a uh, couple of interesting ideas that uh, we might work on. And the last thing, Michael Anthony, everybody knows, is an amazing musician, Van Halen and all that stuff. But i got to be honest, there is uh, a lot of people out there in this world now that are doing hot sauces. There's a lot of artists that are doing branded hot sauces. Mm -hmm. I can honestly tell you, and I'm not saying it just because he's on the phone. I've said it many times. The best one I've ever had is Matt Anthony's sauces, and I use them still to this day. You were nice enough to send me some not too long ago, or a while ago, and uh, the 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 regular hot sauce, the extra hot, and the mustard, just killer stuff. And I'm assuming you're still putting that stuff out, right? Yeah, in fact, I have a new manufacturer that I went with mid mid uh, year here that. Uh, uh, because my uh, original manufacturer did not want to grow it. And I, I, I felt like, hey, you know, I'd like to kind of grow it on a little larger scale. So I partnered up with some other people here on the on the West Coast. And, uh, Eddie, you got to send me your, your address here again. I think I probably have it. Uh, because the Triple the X is now even hotter. The <laughs> mustard has just a little <laughs> – I had to put a little bit more in it. I couldn't leave well enough alone. But it's still, you know, the flavor is what I'm into it. And, I, and it's funny because when I first thought about coming out with a sauce, it was right after Joe Perry uh, from Aerosmith came out with his Boneyard Brew sauce. Right. You, and Joe was the, Joe was the first one I ever got. I'll tell you a quick funny yeah, story about that. Uh, I did a radio special with Joe for Aerosmith from his house, from his studio, Boneyard in in Massachusetts. And at the end of the, the the thing, as I was leaving his house, he handed me a bottle of his hot sauce, and it was the first time I saw like a rock branded hot sauce. And there was a picture of him on the sticker playing guitar and all that, and he handed it to me. And then. About six months later, I saw Joe again, and, and he said, hey, did you try the sauce? And I said, got to be honest with you, Joe, I didn't. And, and he said, why? And I said, well, because it was such, it's such a cool thing. It's on my shelf. Like, that's a cool it's, you know. And, and he handed me another bottle, and it didn't have his picture on it. He goes, you know how many people told me that? He goes, so now I'm not putting my picture anywhere on it. Please try the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> one, you know, one thing that he did that was really cool, and uh, I remember I didn't I – didn't, actually speak to him about it but i saw his uh his guitar tech back then and he uh i don't know if it was on the one that you got but he kind of laminated in or embedded in a pick oh i don't have that in one it, and i thought i go what a great marketing idea joe i mean you know <laughs> even if people don't don't uh try the sauce like you didn't they're gonna buy it because it's got these special picks and it had i think they did it for a while they embedded a pick like a special pick, one of his picks in the bottle. Yeah, you know, it's nothing that you could scratch out at a supermarket. Right, right, right. You know, buy it and kind of cut it out. But uh, yeah, I actually, when he was doing all that, and that was the same time people were going, "Oh, you got to come up with your own hot sauce," you know, blah blah blah, blah this and that. And I actually called the company that was called Ashley Foods that was making his sauce back then. And uh, what they wanted to do was basically they just wanted to take my name, and they come up with a sauce, and I just put my name on it. And I didn't want to do it that way. Plus, they wanted me to give them like some exorbitant amount, like half a million dollars or something like that, to uh, go into their lab and come up with a sauce for me. So I uh, ultimately didn't end up going with them. I found another uh, company here on the West Coast that uh, that I went with. But, uh, yeah, I mean, 
ever since I saw it, you know, when I saw Joe's, I thought, yeah, I'm going to do this. And, and it was just kind of a novelty thing at first, but I'm, I'm really, really into it now. <laughs> and you actually get in there with the recipes and you're actually involved in, in what it tastes like. You're not, I mean, it's not just yeah. a branding thing with you. Right. Because the branding for you, the branding for you actually is very subtle. Your picture, your, at least the, the bottles I have, it's not, you know, it's called Matt Anthony, but it doesn't say, you know, it's not your picture with the Jack Daniels base on the cover. It's Right, right. And if you look at some of the copy on the bottle, like the, new, the, the copy that I have now out on the bottles, it'll say uh, the, the time that I spent in Van Halen that, uh, you know, nobody would come near my food because I, you know, it was so hot, so I decided to... <laughs> bring that flavor to you. So I, I, I have that little mention on there, but besides that, yeah, I wanted, I wanted the sauce. I, I wanted to see the, if the sauce would just stand alone on its own, you know? Because yeah. obviously with it being, you know, with, with it being my sauce or, you know, whoever in a band who, who does something like that, whether it be sauce or alcohol or whatever, you know, it's going to attain some kind of success because of their fan base. But I really wanted to put it on a shelf and have people. And I've had, uh, the when we first came out with my sauce back in 2004, there was a... Um, there's a competition in Texas. Uh, uh, there was a magazine called Chili Pepper Magazine, and my sauce actually came in second. Wow! In the hot sauce category, and and my mustard, which we didn't even have a label for yet, placed first in the gourmet mustard. And so all of a sudden, I got these magazines calling me up and whatever. And uh, and even my in my manufacturers making my sauce. They make a couple of their own sauces. I think they they were a little kind of put off because they never won any awards with their sauce. <laughs> <laughs> how, how can people get it, Michael? People listening. <laughs> well, you know what? The way you can always get it is is probably the easiest way is just go online through my website, MadAnthony'sCafe.com. Okay. If you're out here on the West Coast, there's a company called Bristol Farms Markets. Yep, I've seen them. Okay, now that's kind of the company that I partnered up with. They kind of took me under under their wing, and I'm using their manufacturer and, and uh, distribution. I'm in all their stores here on the West Coast. Very cool. And uh, we're in the process of just growing it now, you know, because I got a new manufacturer, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about, you know, trying to get it out there to more people. Well, it's good stuff. I would highly recommend everybody going uh, and to that website and uh, and ordering some because it really, really is good. Well, thanks, buddy. I'll keep you sauced up, man. You tell me when you need it. <laughs> <laughs> sauced up with hot sauce, and then we'll have some Jack Daniels shots next time. We'll be sauced both ways. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and last thing, if there's somebody listening to this radio show right now who's a young guy, maybe, you know, in their, in their teens, and they never heard Van Halen before, and they're listening to this conversation, and they're hearing me go on and on about the greatness of Van Halen, if if you were going to tell them one Van Halen album they should start with, what's the first one they should buy? It would have to be number one. Okay. Put put that, you know, put it on and listen to You Really Got Me. Come on. Yeah. Well, That's what started the whole thing. Yeah, well, I would I would agree. Start with one. If you one want to and... go from there, then just buy them all. <laughs> so listen to them all then. But I, I would I would say I'd say start with Van Halen, either Van Halen one or if you if you are a Hagar fan or have heard of that, I'd say 5150 because that would, you know, being the first album with Sammy, we came out with both barrels blazing on that one too. Yeah, I would agree. Hey, listen, man, thank you so much for the time. It's always great to talk to you. I, I hope to see you soon. I hope to get you in the studio. We can really get into it, take some calls and, hey, and yeah, have the fun. Great. We always do. Great talking to you, Eddie, and congratulations on the new show. And uh, now I got a reason to, to listen to Sirius again. No, ah, I'm just all right. I'll, I'll, <laughs> hey. I'm going to isolate now, that clip right now, now and take do, it into my gonna, next deal negotiation, oh pal. Oh, boy, there you go. Now, are you going to be doing any kind of Stump the Trump type stuff on your radio show? We'll you just, about doing any of that stuff? People want to call in and Stump the Trunk. We'll do that, and uh, and I'm happy to, you know, as soon as we're just getting started. We don't even have prizes yet, so as soon as I have prizes to give people, we'll, okay. we'll maybe integrate okay. that. Maybe we'll the give them Matt Anthony sauce. The only, well, you know what? You let me know, and I'll throw some sauce at you, man, for, right. for giveaway stuff. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's better to see you on TV because when people stump you, it's great to see those sparklers going off in your head <laughs> and, and Jameson and all those guys laughing at you. But, but let's be honest, Michael. I have a face for radio, though. <laughs> you do. <laughs> this is a better medium. I don't have to subject people to seeing my mug. <laughs> But I'm hoping we do get that metal show back on, and we're trying, but uh, we'll see what happens. But we, we had so thing. many good times the there as well. You're the best. If I ever want to learn anything that I don't know about Van Halen, I'll call, I call you. Sammy you're tells the me the same thing. Sammy always tells me, you know more about my career than I do. He goes, when I forget my own stuff, i got to ask you. Yeah, even some stuff that he'd probably rather forget. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, my friend. Best to your okay. family. Okay, you too. Talk to you soon. All right, man.
One of the best right there, Michael Anthony, some time. What a, what a great way to wrap up uh, a week, our first week of shows here, huh? Uh, what a great way to go into a Friday. That guy's always laughing, always happy, always in a great mood. And, you know, you deal with so many of these ba- – I mean, if you think about the, 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 the situation that guy found himself in, and I've talked to him about it, and I've done many interviews with him, uh, that, that you lost your gig to – to your guitar player's son and and the, the what's happened since and again that this isn't a, a diss on wolfie because wolfie's a talented guy it's not his fault but but if you think about what he has kind of weathered um and his still his demeanor about it all and that he can laugh about it and have that sort of spirit about him the guy's just one of the best it's just He's such a good dude, and uh, and I'm honored to to have become friends with him over the years, and that he was able to do the uh, do Trunk Nation in its first week of ex- existence here on Volume. We got to take a break. We're going to come back. We'll uh, we'll chat for a bit more, and then I'm going to give you the last like half hour of the show on the phone. So you want to jump on the air, talk about what you just heard with Michael Anthony. Uh, the number again eight four four six Volume eight four four six eight six five eight six three toll free of course on Sirius XM Volume Trunk Nation live for another about thirty five minutes or so until the top of the hour. So give us a call. We'll get you guys on the air in just a little bit.